Hi, I'm Lori. And I'm Kathy. And we're going to sit and sew by the sea with you today and show you some very basic applique techniques. Maybe you appliqued and cut fabric and did a satin stitch around the edges by hand. We're going to share with you the process of doing applique on your embroidery machine. Okay, we have an applique design, the Cabbage Rose. Yes. It's a design that you digitize. It's really it cute. It's a very simple design. So we're going to pull that design <laughs> up into our embroidery machine and start having some applique fun. We have our 5 by 7 uh, hoop and I've hooped it with some <laughs> linen just so we can show you uh, the process. I have a flash drive. <laughs> so once I load that in, then I can touch that USB icon and I see the design that's on my stick. So I'm going to choose that design and I'll touch set. So now the design's actually in the machine ready to stitch. I have uh, hooped some, just some linen fabric and I do have stabilizer on it, but we're just doing a little instructional um, project today. So we're not really going to talk about stabilizer too much. We can talk about that another time. But now on the screen in the upper right hand corner, my journey shows me what's going to stitch first. And what is going to stitch first is our placement line because whenever you applique, we're going to add fabric on top of it and we're going to cut away fabric and then we'll do an outline also on that design. So I'm going to go ahead and load my frame in and close my lever. I'm also going to go ahead and show you whenever I actually thread the journey. I have some Dira thread here. And I'm using a large spool, so it's really important whenever you're using threads that you use that appropriate size spool cover. So with this big spool, I'm going to use my big spool cover and I'm just going to follow the numbers, kind of like uh, draw by numbers. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, number six is in front of the needle. I call that the claw and then number seven, and on the left side of the machine, I have a thread cutter. So on the automatic threading system on this, this baby lock machine, we're gonna touch that button right there. It looks like a needle with a thread in it, and it automatically threads that machine. That was fast and easy, right? Well, let's get to the applique fun. We'll lower our, pressers, our presser foot. We're gonna touch embroidery on our screen. Now I have my green light. I'm gonna touch start, and it's gonna stitch out the placement stitch for the leaf on this design. So we've stitched out the placement stitch and then we're going to take our fabric. I have some green fabric because the leaves are what are sewing out first. And then I'm going to make sure I lay that fabric covering the complete placement stitch. When I digitize a design, I try to put all of the placement and tack down stitches and steps in the beginning of the file so that the machine will sew the placement stitch first, then you'll lay your fabric, then you'll trim around your fabric, and then if it has a second or third fabric, you're going to carry on with those steps, sew the placement, lay down the fabric and trim, and then all that's left at the end of the design is the satin stitching or the top stitching or decorative stitching to finish off the design. So our placement stitch stitched, we laid our fabric and our tack down stitch has stitched. So I'm going to remove the frame from the machine and I'm going to go ahead and trim away from the mm -hmm. edges of the leaves. One thing that is uh, what I like to keep in mind too is I don't want to take the frame and put it in my lap even though you're really tempted to do that. Yeah. But it's really great for you to keep it on a flat surface because just in case you're putting pressure accidentally on your frame and you pop your frame out, well then you're going to start over. That's right. Uh, and, and if you move, if you shift the fabric in any way in that hoop, when, when you bring the hoop back to the machine and sew that next step, it might be slightly offline. And you may think there's a flaw in the, the design or the file itself mm -hmm. when actually you've shifted that fabric just a little bit and you didn't even know it. So I'm going to trim just outside of that placement stitch all the way around the design. And I want to trim as close to that 
tack down stitch as I can, but I don't want to cut the thread. Applique is so fun to do, to put it on towels, to put it on burp cloths, put it on maybe a t-shirt. Maybe you want to do a quilt with applique designs. There's wonderful, beautiful applique designs that you can do. Maybe um, a memory quilt to where a child wants a butterfly. They like a butterfly. Maybe grab a really pretty little design that is the favorite of who you're stitching it for. Okay, so there's our leaves. I've trimmed around the outside. So now I'm going to slip the frame back into the machine and it's now going to stitch down my next placement stitch, which is, if I look right here, it's going to show me the image of the rose. So the next thing that's going to stitch is the image, is the placement stitch of the rose. the fabric covering that placement stitch for the rows. I'm going to go ahead and change my thread also to pink. The journey has a little spool cover that looks like this and it's designed to go into the smaller uh, spools and these lovely embroidery thread spools it just slips right in there again you want to make sure you don't use a large spool cover for a small spool of thread that'll get you in trouble if you do that because what will eventually happen or could happen is that thread can wrap around the spool cover and you're going to get tension from the thread to the needle and you're going to break your needle so I've already uh, did my little path I'm going to touch my needle threader button and the thread the needle's going to thread Okay, so now we'll go ahead and stitch our tack down stitch for our cabbage rows. of the placement stitch line, of the tack down stitch line. And I'm going to pull out a different pair of scissors. I'm sure y'all have lots of scissors in your sewing room, <laughs> right? <laughs> never enough scissors, never enough thread, never enough fabric, right? We That's can always okay. buy more fabric and more thread and scissors. Using the, the curved scissors or the duck build scissors just gives you that act added security that you're not going to accidentally snip the garment or fabric that you're working on or appliquing or embroidering on. You want to trim as closely as possible without trimming the, the tack down threads. So the uh, leaves are down, the flowers down, now we're going to slip it back into the embroidery machine and it's going to do our decorative stitching on top of our really pretty little cabbage rows. Okay, so the next part of the design is going to stitch, that is going to stitch, is going to be the little vein in the leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my thread up here and just pull down here from the needle, um, pull this thread off, switch over to my green thread again. On to the next stitch up.
Okay, the design stops. For in, The next thing is going to stitch is the satin stitch around the leaf. So if I wanted to change the color to give a little bit of a different interest between the greens, I could. But I'm going to go ahead and keep it the same color. Go ahead and let that satin stitch stitch around the outside of the leaves. And that's going to be actually securing all those loose edges, all those little whimsical little threads that we're poking out. We won't see that anymore after that satin stitch stitches. So the machine stops in between, uh, we have the little line in between the leaves, mm -hmm. and then the machine stops so you can do a, another thread change if you would like to because, you know, in nature there's different colors, so we could right. have outlined a little deeper color mm -hmm. on the satin stitch on the outside, and that would have been really nice right. too. I like that. I like, because we're on a single needle machine, we can stop and change our embroidery color if we want to. Okay, we've just finished our leaves, so now I'm going to go ahead and cut that thread and change to my really pretty fuchsia thread. You definitely want to use the, that appropriate size spool cover. I want to make sure you hear that because that's important. Okay, so now we're ready to stitch the satin stitch around the outside of the cabbage rose. So like on the outside of our cabbage rose, I like the way it's laying down just like a, um, a tack down zigzag. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of catching mm -hmm. all those little frayed edges and getting them secure before that's it goes exactly, in and does yeah, that. That's exactly what it's doing. It's, it's laying down an underlay stitch to mm -hmm. kind of tame those frayed strands mm -hmm. and uh, to give that, that satin stitch um, a foundation um, so it'll stitch beautifully for you. You can see how quick and easy this is a, a nine minute stitch out on this machine but to personalize something whether it be a garment or a quilt or home decor um, it's very quick and very easy to make something Spe unique and yeah, one of a kind. Special. Mm -hmm. um, it always makes someone really happy when they get something that someone's made for them. That's right. Mm -hmm. I've made quite a few little baby items. And mm -hmm. They're always so excited when they get something mm -hmm. that no one else has. That's right. Handmade's always best. Okay, our design is finished. I'll let you take a look at how pretty that is. See how that really nice bean stitch really pops those leaves, the edging of the leaves. And then the outline also stands up really nice and pretty. So applique in your embroidery hoop. If you haven't tried it on your embroidery machine, I really hope you do. And that we've given you the ability to try something you haven't tried and not be scared. Because it's really easy and it's lots of fun.